Uh, hello and welcome to a new video on Neural Network Scalper. I'm your host, Trader Zane, and hopefully you're doing very, very well. Uh, just as a quick disclaimer, this is not financial advice, and uh, I make no guarantee of code, so there's that. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, right here we're going to use my um, neural network.mqh. This is a neural network that I wrote in MQL5. Very, very fun stuff. And we're going to use uh, trade, account info, and position info. And we're going to instantiate uh, those uh, useful classes right there. We have some inputs uh, that are pretty nice. So we have um, a lot size, pip, um, take profit, stop loss. We're only using a 400 right here. Now I'm on the uh, NAS 100. And so we have magic number buy, but not magic number sell. And then over here we have the really good stuff. Okay, so in this case the default is uh, 10 neurons. So we have a fitting of 0 0.01. In other words, the neural network has to, uh, in the cost function, has the matrix has to be uh, about within a you know, 1% range of accuracy. Um, the learning rate is 0 0.0001, and so that goes right there. The sell threshold is 0.3, and the pred, uh, the buy pred threshold is 0.7. So what we're going to see is that we're going to get a value between 0 and 1. In order for it to be sell, it has to be below 0.3, and in order for it to be buy, it has to be above 0.7. Okay. So we're going to use, in this case, uh, an uh, three by seven input matrix, and we're going to use uh, just one output. So we're gonna have a three by one output. That's all we really need. And then we have a, a whole bunch of parameters. So the RSI is 14, the stochastic oscillator is 533, and we're gonna use an EMA of eight and an EMA of 20. And then we have all these uh, time frames where this is gonna be quite useful. Don't worry about these yet. I'm gonna show you what this is in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to declare a vector for the training. Uh, matrix and what we're going to do is we're going to fill that value with all the RSI values from the different time frames okay so here we have RSI underscore norm and so we're going to get not the most current but the prev from the current okay and since this is the training matrix and what we're going to have is this magic little function called uh, RSI underscore norm and what it does is it converts uh, the RSI value to either 0, 0.5 or 1. So 0. 0.5 is no bias, um, 0 is sell, 1 is uh, buy, and then we're going to do that for all the values that we get including for the stochastic oscillator. Here's uh, that one right there. The MA uh, normalization is going to be if the fast is greater than the slow then it's going to equal 0. The fast is less than the slow is going to equal 1. Very very cool. So let's, uh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna load up a whole bunch of these vectors. And as you can see, this is the stochastic oscillator one, and this is the EMA one. This one looks uh, intimidating, but this is actually, uh, this just copied with the uh, slow EMA put in. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take all those vectors, the in-train uh, RSI, stochastic oscillator EMA, and we are going to put it into uh, this beautiful uh, matrix called in-train. And so these are vectors right here, and this is the row number, right? So zero, in computer science, we start counting at zero. Um, so zero, one, two, okay? And then we can print that matrix. If you wanna print that, you can print that. Then we're gonna do it for the prediction. So it's gonna be the same exact thing, except we're gonna have a zero. We're gonna have the most previous or most current value and all that's good. So then we're gonna put all that into an inpred by three by seven matrix. We're going to put those vectors into the matrix. All that's good stuff. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find a matrix uh, correct three by one. This is our uh, matrix that has our correct value in it. And by default, there's no, uh, it's just completely unbiased, so it's 0.5, so there's no bias. But if the uh, cur price is uh, cur price minus the prev price is greater than zero, then it's a one, and the cur price minus the prev price uh, is less than zero, then it's going to be obviously uh, zero. 
And so the way we get the curve price is we take the ask and the bid and we add them together, divide by two. And then the prev price is, uh, we take this I closed right here and uh, we get a historical value. <clears throat> so all we have to do is uh, fill that core uh, matrix with the correct value. And then what we're going to do is we're going to train NN scalper. Um, this is the class that I instantiated. And it's going to be uh, N dot, uh, this is a dot operator. Uh, dot train and then we put the in prediction and then the correct and then all we have to do is take care of the time okay so this is a time struct I think that's pretty self-explanatory this is bull trade tracker so this allows us to uh, basically very easily manage that we only have one trade open and we're going to trade on Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday if the hour is greater than 17 and the uh, hour is less than 21 and we have uh, the minute has to be modulo uh, 10. So in other words, the minute has to be a multiple of 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever. And so it has to equal zero. And then we have matrix pred M. Uh, this is the pred matrix. Uh, so we're gonna say NN scalper, and then we're gonna throw the in prediction matrix in and we're gonna get our uh, prediction matrix. So we're gonna print it out because we're interested in all the values in there just to make sure that they're kind of uniform. Uh, and then we're going to get the, uh, the mean of that uh, matrix. This is a three by one, so we add up three values, uh, divide by three. Um, very, very cool, we get the mean of that. And we, the mean is our prediction, so we're gonna print, uh, print uh, the prediction. And very easily, if the prediction is greater than the buy threshold and uh, you know, we have no trades open, we're gonna take a buy. If uh, we have pred uh, less than sell, then we enter trade tracker, we do the sell. Okay, so that was a lot of fun. Let's see what's going on with the neural network. Now, I just started the training a little while ago. I can't imagine it's doing too well. Um, I'll show you the inputs that I used as well, but uh, you know, it probably it probably is going to take some time to really train. So maybe I'll put the final training as the uh, thumbnail. That that would be pretty cool. So what we're going to do? I'm going to blindside myself. I promised I would um, because I like doing you know videos where I don't really necessarily know what's going to happen. So uh, here are the inputs: 400 take profit, 400 stop loss, magic numbers. Uh, we have 30 neurons here instead of 10. These are the thresholds. Very, very cool. So now let's go over here. And I doubt we're profitable this early, but uh, we're about um, 99,957. So this is a, a $100,000 account. We can actually see uh, what's going on. So this is the graph. It's actually not that bad. It, it actually did pretty well starting out. It's gonna take some time to uh, learn, so Hopefully uh, it gets better over time. I'll definitely put the uh, finished result in the thumbnail. Now to go over some critiques and criticisms of what I've done. Again, one, it's very, very simple. And it takes into account no fundamental analysis whatsoever. And uh, instead of taking, instead of uh, you know allowing the time to expire, so for example, the trade only lasting 10 minutes, I have a take profit and stop loss. Uh, maybe uh, we could, maybe that's changeable. Um, maybe these are not the correct uh, hyperparameters. Maybe we can throw this into an optimizer and find better parameters. Uh, another thing is maybe this it should not be one. Maybe it should be something higher. Uh, the learning rate could uh, definitely improve. The fitting rate could definitely improve. But we don't want to overfit or underfit. Uh, let's see. We have all that pretty good. I don't see any other serious criticisms. Oh, the other criticism is that the uh, training should only happen maybe in this actual time frame, right? So maybe you want to put the train, like it only trains the network in that time frame. I mean, that's a, that's a very strong possibility. Uh, let's see, other than that, I don't think there are any other criticisms, uh, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. I really, uh, I really worked hard on this today, so uh, it took me a couple hours, but hopefully you enjoy the video. Uh, like, share, and subscribe.